SoFi is down 30% and that is just year to date, currently trading right there towards its 52 week low. So it's now an excellent opportunity to buy this company for insane gains over the next 12 months and beyond. We're gonna find out in today's episode, we're also gonna talk about some insider buying that we have noted just over the more recent quarter. We'll also, as always, take a look at the institutions who seem to be buying a lot of these shares every single quarter over the last few years. We'll also look towards some of their underlying metrics to see whether or not this company has been growing over the longer term. And we'll also see its performance just over the more recent period, not only against the S&P 500, but also others in this industry to understand whether or not it is moving in the same direction or some of their competitors are performing a lot better. And as always, we're going to take a look at how their top line revenue is progressing over the last few years, as well as their bottom line net income. Whilst also taking a look at the balance sheet, very good to have a quick look at the health, total cash versus total debt. And importantly, if we do like this company, we want to include it in our portfolio. We will run it through the valuation model. We want to get to our own intrinsic value, as well as our acceptable buy price, factoring our investor margin of safety and seeing what is Wall Street expecting for growth over the next 12 months. And importantly, in today's episode, we will take a look at three different factors moving forwards, a low growth rate, a medium and a high. So you can also understand where we are getting these numbers from and whether or not you perhaps agree with the future outlook of of SoFi Technologies. So let's remind ourselves of this company. Now it is essentially around the $7 mark trading currently. And as we can see down 30% just year to date, over the last 12 months, again, it is down around 23%. And we can see the 52-week high sits at nearly $12. So it is nearly half the price of what it was at that peak point. And we see one buy rating from Seeking Alpha Analyst. However, we get a double hold from both Wall Street and Quant. And for those that do like to look at the forward P, it is sitting around 83. Although some people will argue this isn't the best valuation method for this type of company. So let's take a look firstly at what is going on with the insiders. And we do know the ownership is sitting around 2.6%. We have just under $1 million worth of buying over the last 12 months, although we do note around 7.31 over the same course. Now, in terms of the more recent action, we do see quarter two around 400,000 worth of buys by insiders. However, the previous quarter of that in 2024, we do see a similar amount of sales. So Let's take a look and see who these insiders are. And in fact, we can note that the CEO, Anthony Notto, on the 23rd of May, did buy around 29,000 shares for around $200,000. He did buy another tranche earlier that month in May as well for around 200,000 as well for a price that isn't too dissimilar from the current trading price. What we do, however, note at the beginning of this year, in fact, 19th of March, the CTO, the Chief Technical Officer, did sell around 56,000 shares, quite a large amount for around $390,000. And he has done this at the back end of 2023 as well. Now, what we would typically say, insider buying is a very bullish signal. We do note the CEO twice over the last month has bought quite a fair number of shares. So we do believe that he has done this because he sees the company that he does believe the share price will rise. But do let me know your thoughts in the comments as not only insider buying, but we also note insider selling in Q1 of 2024. Now, in terms of looking at essentially institutions, well, 38% institutional ownership, around $90 million worth of sales by the institutions over the last 12 months. But we do, in fact, see a lot more buying $755 million worth over the same period. And we can also point to the more recent quarter, Q1 of 2024, $162 million versus 40 million sales. And we can see the general theme is very consistent over the last few years, a lot more buying by the institutions than there has been selling quarter on quarter. So very bullish from both institutions and insiders. But as always, do your own due diligence. Never copy what insiders or institutions do. And let me know your thoughts on this, whether or not you do see the CEO buying in the more recent quarter as a good sign for this company moving forward. Now, let's just take a look at the numbers. Now, as always, we do want to see some nice growth consistently year on year. What we do note, well, 507 million on their top line, December 2017, 2.1 billion in December 2023. So we do note the growth over the longer term, as we can see, it did drop from 2017 to 2018. Since then, though, it has picked up very nicely. So that is off to a very good start. However, what we do know when we do see the bottom line net income, 50 million reported in 2017. However, since that point, 
year on year, as we can clearly see from the brackets around the numbers, they have been making a loss. And that is shown graphically here as well. So for a company, their top line revenue is increasing. However, their bottom line, as we can see, even though it is inconsistent, it is continuously inconsistently negative. So something to bear that in mind as we do move throughout the episode. And you could, in fact, factor that into the margin of safety that we'll come on to in the valuation aspect shortly. Quickly then looking at their total cash versus their total debt, 325 million reported in their balance sheet in 2018. 3.7 billion reported as we can see here in that latest quarter so their cash position has increased quite considerably over the last few years so off to a positive start on the balance sheet but bear in mind this number on its own doesn't really tell us much we'd like to have a quick analysis against the total debt numerically and directionally and actually that is fairly positive their total debt has gone from 6.6 .6 billion as we can see in 2018 down to around 3 billion in that latest quarter which is a good sign they paid off some of that debt as we can see just from that latest annual report over the last six months we do see they have paid around 2.4 billion worth of debt so great sign cash has been increasing total debt has been decreasing so that is something that we do like to see on this channel now in terms of looking at their earnings per share how they've performed well this is just something for the consistency as we do it essentially on other companies we analyze but over the last four quarters we do note three of them they either beat or were in line quarter three they did miss so again something just to factor in their track record is around 75 percent we don't have the data for the next two quarters but we can see q4 and q1 they are expecting some large increases and if they do manage to execute on the earnings per share estimate of december 2025 the forward p will drop substantially to around 30.09 so information is there if you want to factor that into your investment thesis as we can see clearly that they are expecting this company to perform very strongly and very rapidly just over the next few years now in terms of valuation grade c minus now again this is a company that maybe you don't want to look at the p on a non-gap basis but again for the consistency it is around 96 sector median sits around 10.31 if you do want to look at the other metrics that are applicable we have the price to sales around three versus a 2.55 for those in the same sector if you want to look at it on a forward basis again a very similar result they are trading at a premium 18 percent on a trading 12 month basis 25 percent on a forward looking basis and we can see pretty much a very similar story if you look at it on a price to book value as well so that is why overall they do get a c minus on a valuation aspect we then draw your attention to the growth grade now year on year 35 percent when you compare that to the sector median 4.53 so a lot better so you maybe are starting to understand why that valuation is so high in comparison to the sector median forward as well 21.78 percent 5.2 the sector median ebitda growth as well 82 percent we can see others around 10 so on the growth aspect they are very strong as we can clearly see here a a plus across the board for these different growth numbers and when we compare it to the profitability we do see some that are positive however some that are fairly negative so interestingly the gross margin a lot better than the sector 82 percent sector around 60 percent so a better score by around 38.4 percent however we do notice the bottom line negative eight percent as we mentioned they haven't really be turning a profit sector median a lot better and in fact positive at 22.96 percent and we can see here when we do compare their cash from operations negative 4 billion versus at least 161 million positive from the sector comparison now a quick update or a quick conclusion in fact one buy rating from seeking alpha a double hold from the other two analysts a c minus on valuation and a plus on growth with an f on the profitability now how have they compared against others what is the secular trend and as we can see here others that we're looking at in the consumer finance one main holding credit acceptance corporation as well as a few others well for sofi they are in fact down 24 percent making them the worst performer over the last 12 months and in fact we do see that they are just one of the few that have been negative alongside cacc omf are positive fcfs looking positive all of them looking very well in fact so you could argue that this isn't an issue with the industry as a whole sofi has been hit very hard just over the last 12 months in fact year to date down 30 percent now we're just doing this analysis just again to keep the consistency but over the same period over the last 12 months while sofi has been down 23 percent the s p has been up pretty much the same but positive so you have negative 23 with positive 23 
But as always, there will be a lot of people who will understand that still don't want to invest in the S&P 500 because they do believe over the longer term, SoFi will outperform the S&P. And let me know your thoughts about that in the comments below. Now, before we do take a look at some of the underlining metrics, just to let you know, we have released our latest free weekly article, 12 undervalued high quality stocks. If you want access to this or any others, all completely free, do click on that pinned comment below. If you want to see the websites that we use, the resources, click on this article, how to find undervalued stock. And as always, you can get instant access straight away. So in terms of some of their metrics, now free cash flow per share, we do pretty much see over the last few years, it has been negative bar 2018. But what we can in fact see over the next 12 months, it is expected to turn positive, which is a good sign, 54 cents per share. But again, do factor in for the majority of the time, it has been negative. In terms of sales growth, we're actually quite nice. It has been strong double digit growth for the majority of those last six years. Although you could argue perhaps that the growth is slowing down 35% on a trading 12 month basis, just something to keep an eye on. And if you want to see more about their investor presentation, the additions of their customers, as well as other key points from their latest earnings, do check out our last episode on SoFi where we do take a look at that in quite some detail. Total sales then we can see over the longer period it has been increasing as we looked at earlier, just a different format here. Shares outstanding. Now, what we quite like to see is companies that do those share buybacks, returning excess cash to investor pockets. Unfortunately, with this, we have done the opposite. They have diluted your position as a shareholder. So do bear that in mind. They aren't a company that have typically over the past returned that excess cash by buying back shares. ROE, no surprise here. It is negative as they haven't turned a profit in quite some time. And when we do take a look at the margins, no surprises as what we just looked at before. Only one essential year where it was positive. And the net debt to EBITDA, so this is the earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, amortization, essentially shows us the balance sheet strength as well as dividend safety. This isn't a company that does currently pay a dividend. So again, this is just more focusing on the balance sheet. What we notice, 2023, 5.27, it will take them 5.27 years to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. But as we saw just over the more recent quarter, their cash balance has increased, their total debt has decreased. Hence why on a trailing 12-month basis, as well as the next 12 months, we are looking at zero, meaning it won't even take so far one day to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. So their balance sheet is getting stronger. So let's jump into the valuation model as always. And if you do enjoy the content, value is being provided. Smash that like button and hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. So the DCF model, we have the free cash flow year on year. Now the average growth rate, 263%. We've started off with a low growth rate forward looking at 6%. Based on this, we and the essentially the discounted rate, we get the present value of future free cash flows and terminal value. Add together with the cash, subtract total debt, get to the equity value, divide by shares outstanding. And as we can quite clearly see here, the intrinsic value is coming to around $11, showing undervaluation with a market price around $7. Now do bear in mind the starting position for 2024 is the estimated price of the free cash flow that is anticipated by management for the full year. So as we can see, when we do take a look at that growth rate, it is estimating around 58% upside. And as we can see that value of 11%. Now, there may be some people who believe it should be higher so than 8%, what we can see an intrinsic value of 1241. And therefore, this does give us upside of 78%. Again, some people may be even more optimistic and say it should be 10%. Maybe they want to be less conservative to see what actually is expected over the future periods. That would give an intrinsic value of $14, estimating a 100% upside, therefore doubling your money if you were to invest at the current price. Don't forget, though, this is all very subjective. You can grab a copy of this model by clicking on the pinned comment below where you can run your own numbers through for SoFi Technologies or if you do want to take a look at other companies and again, run your own numbers. What we're going to take through to the next slide is essentially the lowest estimate there of 6% forward looking. So we can be very conservative in today's estimation. Now, the intrinsic value, therefore, is just that DCF price of $11.04. And what we always do on this channel is use a margin of safety. Bear in mind, we do start off with a 10% MOS level, but we only execute on that if it meets the three golden criteria, wide moat, strong financial metrics, good forward looking data. If you believe that, then you do essentially lock it in a buy at around $10. And then we keep going 
to see what is the MOS level for SoFi in today's episode. And as we can see, it does have quite a large acceptable buy price with our margin of safety. Not quite there at a 40%. In today's episode, though, it is at least a 35% MOS level. And again, that is based on the estimates and judgments we ran through just now. In terms of Wall Street and their forecasted price, well, they see around $9.05 over the next 12 months. They believe at least 30% upside. So they do consider this one for the portfolio. But as always, let me know your thoughts in the comments below, whether or not this is at an attractive MOS level, whether or not this is one you are considering for the portfolio, or maybe it's one you already buy, or in fact are looking to sell because you don't believe the future is too bright for SoFi Technologies. As always, if you enjoyed today's episode, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button. And as always, we'll see you all on the next one.